How would you like 1 million subscribers on YouTube? You might think it will actually take you years of hard work and honing your skills for that. I mean, it took me 7 years to get this channel to 1 million subscribers. 7 years of constant learning and experimenting. Well, today I'm about to give you the secret golden ticket of YouTube, which will allow you to speed run the algorithm and grow your channel to millions of subscribers with as little effort as possible. Why spend 10 years gaining a million subscribers when you can do it in one month? So grab yourself a cup of tea and get comfy as I'm about to open your eyes to the brand new world of YouTube Shorts and the creators who are exploiting them for gigantic success on the platform. Oh, and by the way, thank you very much to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today's video. They're the personal funders of today's lawyers who will be 100% necessary when Susan, the CEO of YouTube, comes breaking down my door. Thanks. YouTube Shorts are a relatively new feature on YouTube and are absolutely overpowered. If we're having a tier list of all YouTube features and algorithmic exploits, this breaks the tier list and goes beyond the moon to some kind of quadruple S tier of algorithmic chaos. Community polls were fantastically broken and resulted in channels gaining millions more impressions than normal and consequently growing their audience faster than ever before. This however, unlike community polls, has no limit, it has no cap, and most importantly, it has no fix. That's because this feature, if you can believe it, is actually working as intended. So what is a short? Well, shorts are the result of a YouTube employee who copied the homework of TikTok, but don't don't worry, there's no copyright issues here, as TikTok technically also copied the idea from Snapchat, who in turn copied the idea from Vine. At this point, who cares where short form portrait content came from? All we need to know is that there's a giant market for it, and that market is monolithic. We're talking big, potentially even bigger than my own ego and charisma stats, and trust me, they're gigantic. Shorts are generally short, funny videos often set in the real world, allowing creators to do funny skits without having to ram them into 10 minute long videos. To make a short you just need a few things. A video that is in portrait, so generally the 1080 by 1920 resolution. The video needs to be less than 60 seconds in length and include the term hashtag shorts in the description. And it is genuinely as easy as that. Anyone can make a short using their phone, or if you really want to crush the market and create something with high production value, then you can just make a short on your PC and edit it up properly. Now, unlike community polls, all channels have access to make shorts. Your channel could have zero subscribers, your channel could have 10 million. It doesn't make a difference in the eyes of the short algorithm. So how do shorts work? How do they break the algorithm? And more importantly, what creators have been secretly using this exploit to take their channels from no views a month to actually overtaking PewDiePie in less than a three month span. So today, to show off just how broken this feature is, and also to explain why so many YouTubers have been using it wrongly, I will be referencing two fantastic brand new creators who have taken a channel from zero subscribers to hundreds of millions of viewers each month over the course of just a few months. The two channels are Jake Fellman and Block Facts. Prior to making shorts, Jake Fellman had a YouTube channel with less than 15,000 subscribers. Block Facts took a brand new channel with zero subscribers to where it sits now at over half a million subscribers in less than two months. Now, YouTube has had channels grow from zero subscribers to one million subscribers very quickly, but those channels have had massive outside influence, often from celebrities on Twitter or their giant music labels, and these are the factors causing the channel to grow very quickly. It's not all organic. These two channels, however, have power leveled their way to a position above PewDiePie with no outside support. They have proved that in 2021, anyone can get famous on YouTube. So why have these creators suddenly exploded? And how does the short algorithm really work to enable this kind of crazy growth from zero to a million? So we know shorts are super short videos in portrait mode, but what makes them so special is that they have access to a separate algorithm to the rest of YouTube. A regular video on YouTube gets uploaded and it gets sent out to subscribers subscribers and everyone who would usually be recommended that kind of video. Viewers then see the thumbnails, most of them will ignore the thumbnails, but a certain percentage of them will actually click on and watch the video. Shorts, however, are different. They don't rely on thumbnail impressions, they don't rely on that standard algorithm. Shorts have access to two separate planes of existence. The regular video plane of gaining views from recommendations and thumbnails and a good title, and now the brand new insanely powerful short shelf. Shorts on YouTube are currently gaining over 3.5 billion views per day across the globe. This is massive, as on a platform where less than 0.1% of the creators are making shorts, you can have access to a huge open market share that is just waiting for content to be flooded into it. Now what is the short shelf? Well, after you make a short and upload it, usually around about 24 hours later, you will notice something very interesting happening to the video. It's going to start gaining thousands and thousands of views from a source that is simply called shorts. This is the magical hidden short algorithm at work 
work, meaning that your videos are being played after other shorts content or being featured on the short shelf, which is directly recommending people your video. Now, when we set up our experiment channel from scratch a few weeks ago, we expected our first video to get a maximum of 10 views as well, that number is well above the average for someone's first video on a brand new channel with no outside influence. Well, it turns out shorts are pretty powerful because our first video managed 500 views. That's actually really, really good. But then the second video happened. The second video on our test channel, which we put basically no effort into, managed to get 30,000 views. It took me four years on YouTube to get a video to have more than 10,000 views, and using YouTube Shorts, we did it on our second day. Now, the fact a channel can gain a thousand views from scratch at just its beginning with no outside influence is fantastic, but this is just the beginning, because you have to think of YouTube as a cycle of growth. If you manage to start the ball rolling, then all subsequent growth gets easier and easier until you reach the peak of your available market. The short algorithm is just completely and utterly broken. Effectively, when you create a short, you're not even uploading to YouTube as a platform. It doesn't even feel like that. Instead, you're just uploading a video to a magical money pot of infinite views, which YouTube is just pulling out of the woodworks to go, hey, this random video here, how much effort did you put into it? Oh, it took you five minutes to make, bam, 600,000 views. What's that? You spent 40 minutes doing an in-depth review of The Witcher 3? Two views. Redundant. We don't want that content. Short, 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 short. So before we reveal the optimal shorts meta and where so many creators have actually been going wrong, let's do a nice quick deep dive into our two example shorts channels that have taken the YouTube algorithm and made it look about as stable as me after discovering that I've just run out of tea bags. And trust me, you don't want to see me when I've run out of tea bags. So what makes Block Facts and Jake Filman the perfect creators for shorts and why are they doing so well? To put it simply, their format for content is perfect and they're entering into markets with high demand for shorts, but of course, little supply. Among Us, Minecraft, Fortnite, and no, not you four guys, have all been dominating gaming viewership on YouTube for the last few months. So as you can imagine, creating shorts relating to these free viral games is a surefire way to farm success. If you can target a short into a viral market, then congratulations, you're going to be printing views faster than Venezuela can create hyperinflation. Now, Jake Fellman creates 3D animations of the game Among Us. He successfully capitalizes on the trending topics and jokes of Among Us by making 10 to 30 seconds and long skits, often with music and the signature title of Among Us in HD. YouTube detects these popular terms and, well, does what it does best, features the video on the short shelf. If, of course, it starts performing well and gets high interactions from the viewers and a good average viewership watch time, then hey, YouTube promotes it to more and more and more and more and oh dear goodness, it's getting millions of views now. Now, Jake Fellman's videos are short so that viewers are guaranteed to watch almost all of the video. They also have strong and powerful thumbnails that stick out against the other Among Us videos. Short videos are unique as the thumbnail displayed on the short shelf is actually separate to the thumbnail you put on the video. The thumbnail on the short shelf is always the default auto thumbnail detected by YouTube. And because Jake Fellman's videos are visually distinct, this allows him to naturally have a strong click-through rate in comparison to actual shorts containing real Among Us footage. And boy, does that translate into great viewership numbers. Now, the thing is, Jake Fellman does have a lot of experience as a content creator. He's been around on TikTok for a very long time and evidently is a dab hand when it comes to video editing and production. The next channel, however, is going to be a little bit different. Allow me to introduce you to Blog Facts. This channel effectively does some high octane insight into each and every individual block and item in Minecraft, providing very interesting facts. Every video is exactly 27 seconds in length, as this keeps audience retention by featuring an almost constant stream of dialogue. When I interviewed the lovely chappy in charge of this channel, he explained that he aims to have 120 words per 30 seconds in his video, which is absolutely absolutely incredible. The intention here is to stop people clicking away onto a different short because of the amount of information you're bombarding them with and with just how high octane the editing is. If your short video is being watched 100% of the way through, then fantastic, it's going to be getting recommended to more people. This is why his content works. Equally, at the same time, he has a very smart way of getting more comments on his videos. During the footage of his actual block facts, he regularly features the skins of other famous Minecraft content creators as this actually leads to more comments on the video as the audience who generally are on the younger end of things will be commenting as soon as they recognize some of their favorite creators. Now, both of these channels have great market dominance. However, there is more than enough space for a few new entrants when it comes to harvesting up the millions of views that are available with shorts. So let's wave goodbye to the Fact Channel that got to 500,000 subscribers after basically just one month and an Among Us animator who now pulls in six times the views that PewDiePie manages each month. Instead, let us discuss our own experiment channels and how well we managed to blitz through the algorithm over our few 
weeks of testing out various types of short form content. So in total, we set up two test channels. One was entirely run by my editor and the other was a test channel run basically by myself. However, the videos we put onto the channel were actually relatively unique. You see, I wanted to see just how well we could make a channel do without actually putting any effort into it. So what we did was we set up a basic editing AI and found a whole bunch of raw video footage to edit down into compilations. The AI edited the videos into the perfect portrait mode, cut out all of the boring and slow parts, and then formatted it perfectly for YouTube. All we had to do was slap on a title and copy and paste in a description and some tags, and then we're bam, we have a perfect short video with as little effort as possible. The other channel my editor set up, however, is actually creative, unique, and featured quality and effort put behind it. And so by running these two test channels side by side, we decided to see which channel would perform the best. But equally, the real experiment of my personal random test channel was really just a channel dedicated to testing different types of thumbnails, content, titles, and formats on the shorts algorithm. And well, after a few weeks of testing, we made some key observations. Number one, copyrighted music damages the actual impact and potential growth of a short. And this is very impactful on small channels, but actually it doesn't really seem to have that much of an effect on a larger channel. Number two, subscribers are good, so make sure to have a call of action for subscribers, but equally commenters on a short are much, much better. Number three, you get really low payments per views in comparison to a normal video. Payment per view depends on a huge amount of factors normally for videos like demographics and geography, but in the case of shorts, that number is exceedingly small in comparison. However, of course, because viewership numbers are so high, shorts creators will probably actually have access to some absolutely incredible sponsored and brand deals. I mean, if you're able to guarantee a million views on a short video, you can effectively, instead of uploading a 30 second short, upload a straight 30 second advert. What company wouldn't want to pay good money for that? Number four, shorts are not limited by language. This is actually really important because on a platform which is very dominated by the English speaking language, the fact that these shorts are actually so short in length means that most short content doesn't really feature much spoken language. Instead, it's usually music and interesting colors. This is really impactful, especially considering the shorts feature is becoming more and more popular in different countries, especially India. Number five, fast paced content does best. Usually content which is either edited in a way which is very fast, quick and free flowing, or content which has very high paced spoken words. Number six, videos generally perform best on the short shelf if you upload them multiple times to try and get the best auto thumbnail on the video. Number seven, channels doing a mix of shorts and normal videos don't grow anywhere near as fast as exclusively short channels. It doesn't really seem to actually damage your channel if you do a mix of shorts and normal videos, however definitely the channels that are attempting that are not doing anywhere near as well. Creators like League Legal are creating innovative new content by using shorts, however there's a reason why Mr. Beast has an exclusive shorts channel. However, he isn't actually even using that channel as efficiently as he should be. And here's why. Number eight, consistent uploads. Short channels are really all about velocity. They're not quite flash in a pan success monstrosities, but just like their content, they have to be very fast paced. Generally speaking, all the shorts channels that are at the top are uploading once a day. I will be conducting a few experiments in the coming weeks to see if uploading multiple times a day to a shorts channel is powerful, as we do know that shorts can get featured on the short shelf multiple times, but equally a channel can have multiple videos on the short shelf simultaneously. So theoretically, there's no reasons that I can think of why uploading multiple times a day and just flooding the market isn't a valid way of breaking the shorts algorithm. But as I say, that one requires a little bit more testing on our end. Certainly one of the things that massively hampered my personal testing channel was the fact that for a multiple day period, we simply didn't upload. Uh, this was because we were exceedingly busy with other stuff involving this channel here. Number nine, of course, not all content works as shorts. This kind of goes a little bit without saying, but not all content formats really work. As we've mentioned previously, generally things like skits or animations or gameplay highlights are the type of short content that are performing really well. However, there's generally nothing stopping, say, news events working quite well, or maybe just tutorials, life hacks, that sort of content will probably all translate very well to shorts. And of course, following on from this, number 10, shorts work best as one-off content, not series. That's right, generally speaking, you don't want a coherent series going between your shorts because your shorts are going to be varying in viewership numbers by massive quantities. And number 11, here's the most interesting thing of all, average viewership duration can be well above 100%. Now, that final statistic is insane. My channel over its entire history has had an average viewership duration of over 50%, and it's not impossible to have an average viewership duration of above 100% on regular YouTube videos, but usually these videos are exceedingly short. The fact that this statistic is relatively common for shorts is absolutely incredible in terms of their power in the algorithm. Because what this statistic translates to 
is that the average person is watching this video multiple times. If that's actually happening, then that video is going to explode. Now, what makes shorts so interesting is just how easy they are to make and how amazingly fair the shorts algorithm is. Because of the lack of supply and high demand for shorts, anyone can become famous and find success making them. Really, the only limitations beyond the market cap is your own ability to make content. Content creation is not easy and it's not something that anyone can do, but it is something that anyone can learn. I strongly recommend you give it a go and make some shorts. And hey, if you do make any, tweet them to me or drop them in the comment section as I would love to see your creations. Now, of course, there is a reason why I won't be showing the name of my personal test channel, and that is because I want to spend a few more months experimenting on it before we claim responsibility for the monstrosity of a channel that we created. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, this really is a once in a lifetime opportunity that I do recommend all of you actually give a go. The reasoning is very simple. There are currently very few creators who are using shorts when it's in its beta stage to actually make really good, unique content. Generally speaking, the field is flooded by a whole bunch of TikTok re-uploading, and that kind of reusing of basically existing content can only get you so far online. The people that will prosper are the ones who actually create something unique. Equally, one of the most powerful things in shorts is just having a very good thumbnail and a very fast-paced video. So keep experimenting so that you can find a format that really works for you. But seriously, just give it a go. You might have been doing YouTube for years and actually started struggling lately, and that's okay. Everyone struggles with YouTube, but just give making shorts a go because it's a very enjoyable, unique way of creating content online. At the same time, it's also completely and utterly broken. There has never been an event on YouTube like this where a creator can go from nothing and suddenly become one of the largest creators on the platform. So seriously, this is going to be the final one. Go do it. Give it a go. It's fantastic. When you become a billionaire, you can like this video, come back and leave a comment on it saying thank you for helping me become the largest channel on YouTube and that's okay, that's fantastic. But for the time being, you can celebrate this gloriously broken and overpowered feature, share it amongst all of your friends and watch as all of your YouTube channels do far better than they already were. But what this video has ultimately shown us and this exploit is that in the modern 21st century, the greatest way of making money and actually just being in control of your life is coming to understand that everything is determined by algorithms. Now, today's video is of course sponsored by Curiosity Stream, a very fun learning platform online, and they are a host of many, many documentaries, including some fantastic ones like Making Money in the 21st Century. This very short documentary basically outlines the fantastic way that algorithms now control basically every aspect of our lives. It's no longer a case that a human decides whether or not you should get a mortgage or a loan, it's now up to an algorithm. Now, to many of you, that might be daunting and scary, and it probably should be, but to someone like myself, it's fantastic. Every algorithm can be exploited. So hey, why not use the link in my description to go sign up for Curiosity Stream today and get a lovely discount. By basically watching all of their documentaries on algorithms and AIs, you'll probably get a vague idea of some of the exploits that we're going to be pulling off this year. Better yet, if you actually sign up for Curiosity Stream, you also gain access to the platform of Nebula, which is a platform where you can access basically all of my videos without any adverts, and equally it's a platform where I'm able to upload extended cuts of all of my exploits, which aren't exactly going to be YouTube friendly. Because as much as I'm sure some of you would like to sit down and watch an additional 10 minutes of me talking about the absolute optimal SEO key term balance of a video, generally speaking, most of you aren't interested in that. <laughs> so yes, a extended cut of this video will be going up to Nebula as well as my patrons and my channel members on YouTube. So hey, you've got that lovely additional 10 minutes of rambling to look forward to. But seriously, thank you very much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really excited to actually see some of the content that gets created from this because I know the shorts feature is just such an underused part of YouTube and is so, 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 so powerful. And hey, probably in a few months time, we'll reveal our ultimate shorts channel and just how broken it is because my goodness, it are shorts terrifying. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons, channel members, just people who support us. Heck, you even signing up for a free one month trial of Curiosity Stream. You're absolutely fantastic, each and every one of you, because you allow us to keep making these fantastic videos and most importantly, afford the necessary legal protection that someone like myself requires, considering the amount of money laundering that we have to do. Trust me, we have to do it. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you want to watch another video, then I've got this one on screen now. Trust me, you're going to absolutely love it. And I'm afraid that's all I've got in store for today, so I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day, and goodbye for now.